Hello. In this video we will talk about the expression and purification of a protein of interest by using a bacterial expression system. This process can take several days. In our case, we completed the bacterial growth, expression and purification in 3 days. Prior to the experiment, we need a bacterial plate, LB medium, IPTG and nickel NTA column. In the first day of the experiment, we inoculated one of the colonies formed on an agar plate in the LB medium containing a selective antibiotic. Since this is a bacterial protocol, we need to work in a sterilized environment. To do so, we first clean the bench with 70% ethanol. Here we do not use gloves in case of getting burned in the open fire. The reason why we work close to fire is to eliminate the possible contaminants in the air. We put 3 ml of LB medium to the tube via sterile pipette and tips, or here we can also use surgical pipettes. After taking 3 ml LB, the lid of the Falcon tube and LB stock was closed tightly. Then we added 3 microliter antibiotic, which is canamycin, and mixed well. After that, we remove the perfume on the plate and select one colony and then inoculate in the LB canamycin medium. We left the bacterial culture to grow overnight in the 37 degrees Celsius shaken incubator. Do not extend the time more than 16 hours, otherwise the antibiotic amount in the media may deplete. First we ignite the fire and transfer 200 ml LB medium into 1 liter Erlenmeyer flask. Here the volume of the Erlenmeyer should be at least 5 times bigger than the LB media added as to allow the proper mixing and aeration of the culture during the growth. As they are more practical, for greater volumes we prefer to use serological pipettes. After we put the LB, we add 200 microliter canamycin to the LB media and then mix well. Then we took the overnight grown culture. 
After bacterial cells have grown in the media, they will make the LP look blurry. Before inoculation, we took 1 ml of LB canamycin media and transferred to a UV viscuet to later use it as a blank in spectroscopic measurement to determine the bacterial growth stages. After that, we add bacterial culture in LB canamycin medium, mixing well, and then aliquot 1 ml of the solution into the cuvette to measure its absorbance at 600 nanometer wavelength. Before we go to measure absorbance, we place bacterial growth medium in the shaking incubator at 37 degrees Celsius. Be careful when placing Erlenmeyer in the incubator and make sure it is tightly attached to the chambers inside. In the UV spectrophotometer, we choose applications and single wavelength measurement. We set the wavelength to 600 nanometer and then press OK. First, we place LB canamycin media as blank. While placing, follow the arrows indicated on both cuvette and sample holder. This is crucial to assure correct placement of cuvette and access to light. Also, do not touch the below part of the cuvette. After placing, press blank and let it measure. Then, put your first sample cuvette and press measure. Note the time and the OD value. Read the absorbance of the bacterial culture until the optical density is in between 0.4 to 0.6 at 600 nanometers. We choose this wavelength since the cells will not be killed as they would under UV light. Moreover, the cuvettes that we use is also appropriate for the defined wavelength, which means that it will not reflect the light. This wavelength also minimizes interferences from yellowish broads. Take 1 ml of culture each time and place in UV cuvette. Be careful not to form bubbles in the cuvette during the process.
When the optical density of the culture reached around 0.5, we took it from the incubator and added 1 ml of IPTG solution to induce the expression of our target protein. Then we put it back to a shaken incubator at 18 degrees Celsius for overnight induction. IPTG is the molecular mimic of allolactose, which is a lactose metabolite that triggers transcription of black operon, and it is therefore used to induce protein expression where the gene of interest is under the control of black operator. When IPTG is available, it binds to the lac repressor and causal dissociation, therefore allows RNA polymerase to initiate T7 transcription. When T7 polymerase is expressed via IPTG, it binds to the T7 promoter located on the upstream of the targeted protein, enabling expression of protein of interest. After the induction of protein expression, we take the culture from the incubator. Then we divide the culture into four pre-chilled Falcon tubes. To remove media from bacterial culture, we centrifuge the tubes at 4700 RPM for 20 minutes at 4 degrees Celsius. Make sure that each tube has identical amounts for a balanced centrifuge. After the centrifuge, we observe a bacterial pellet and a clear supernatant. Discard the supernatant to a bacterial waste and place the tubes on ice. First, we need the lysis buffer, which we add one tablet of protein inhibitor to prevent the proteins from degradation. Then we add 50 ml of lysis buffer in a tube, mix and vortex well.
We then transfer the same resuspension to other tubes in order to resuspend and recover the pellets in those other tubes. The lysis buffer contains salts, lysozyme, DTT, and PMSF. Lysozyme breaks peptidoglycan cell walls, DTT is used to prevent oxidation damage of the protein, and PMSF is used to prevent protease degradation. Next, we pour the solution into a beaker placed on ice prior to lysis by a probe sonication process. Probe sonicator applies ultrasonic power to the sample, resulting in full destruction of the cell membrane. First, clean the probe with the tissue and ethanol. Next, set up the parameters for the cell lysis. Here we set 10 seconds pulse in 70% amplitude for 20 minutes. After setting the parameters, we place the sample in the probe, in a way that we could prevent the contact of probe with the glass. Then, we press the start. After the sonication, we observe bubbles in the sample, then remove the sonication probe from the sample. Transfer the sample to a 50 ml Falcon tube and centrifuge for 45 minutes at 4700 rpm at 4 degrees Celsius. Here our proteins are soluble in the liquid phase. After the centrifuge, we obtain the protein in supernatant and the cell debris in the pellet. Now let's talk about nickel NTA column purification. Nickel neutral acetic acid column purification is an affinity purification system which is designed for the purification of 6x histac proteins. Nickel NTA agarose beads are located into the column in liquid form. Upon addition of histac proteins, nickel forms bonds with nitrogen atom of histacs, making proteins bind to the agarose beads. After the addition of imidazole, the bonds are broken meaning his tags are replaced by the imidazole, leading to the elution of proteins from the column. The protocol for the nickel NTA has mainly four steps. Step 1 is the equilibration of the column, which includes conditioning of the column to make it ready for the binding of his tag proteins. Here we use MPI-10 buffer, which is defined as lysis and equilibration buffer. The second step is binding of the proteins whereby the histags are binding to the nickel NTA agarose beads. Here we load the bacterial lysate. After that, we wash the column with MPI-20 buffer to remove unbound proteins and contaminants. The last step is the elution, in which we increase the concentration of the imidazole in the buffers and elute the protein. The pH of buffers used is at 8. After the elution, we wash the column with sodium hydroxide and store it in ethanol for further use. Remove the lids of the column, let the storage buffer flow. Take the supernatant of the cell lysate into a fresh tube and put it on ice. Add MPI-10 buffer to the column. Since the column is filled with beads in liquid, it should never be dried out. Therefore, keep the liquid levels above the agarose. While adding the buffers, use pasta or pipette and add each solution from the edges of the column gently. Next, add the bacterial lysate supernatant into the column. 
The yellow color will guide the locale of the perkin. After adding the whole supernatant, let the liquid flow by gravity. Here, we use wash buffer to remove contaminants and other proteins to purify his stack protein. Load the buffer to the column as gently as possible. After washing, we add illusion buffer to unlink resin and the protein. Since we were purifying a fluorescent protein, yellow color coming down could be a clear indication of protein solution. After the illusion, we can clean the column with sodium hydroxide. Then we add ethanol, keep the beads in it, close the lids and store at 4 degrees Celsius. Here we use an Amicon ultra centrifuge tube to concentrate our protein. We gently load our protein solution to the filter part of the protein. After the nickel intake column purification, we can make dialysis to remove excess of imidazole. Then we can apply TEV enzyme cut, which separates 6 x cystacks from our target protein. As a last step, we can also apply size exclusion chromatography to further purify our protein of interest. <laughs> 